Hello, um, so as you could see D600X is up and running, uh, it's got the SATA hard disk installed uh, with the IDE44 to SATA adapter and with the uh, memory upgraded as we did in, at the end of the previous episode it can uh, easily boot Linux 4.0 well in this case uh, this is the void Linux distribution and the i386 version um, I've tried Slackware previously and it didn't really work out I mean it installed just fine but uh, for some odd reason it did not detect the uh, serial port in this laptop said serial would just uh, detect this as an unknown type of serial port it just wouldn't work which is a problem because I was uh, mostly planning to use this laptop as a portable serial terminal for all for all the older stuff so that was uh, all that it comes to this lacquer adventure I've installed Void Linux on this thing uh, just because it's a uh, very nice operating system, very bare bones. You can uh, doesn't install any unnecessary stuff, uh, but it also comes with a very nice package manager. Uh, Slackware does that as well, but yeah, I've only had a bit of time to get familiar with Slack builds. If you're curious how I actually managed to connect an SSD uh, to a laptop this old, well. Uh, you should really get one of these. It's a SATA 244 pin IDE adapter. They are actually very handy. They come in all sorts of uh, plug configurations. This particular one is uh, SATA uh, laptop side to uh, uh, disk side IDE 44. While we're getting these, it's also uh, useful to actually get some of these. Uh, which are IDE44 to CF card adapters, which I believe I featured in a previous video about the uh, Winterm terminal. Um, here's another one. Uh, yeah, this one is to a male IDE44, and this one is to a female IDE44, and this one is also a straight through, and this is uh, an angled one. You should uh, really have a couple of these in different configurations um, just to have something on hand. However, what's worth actually noting about the CF card to ID adapters is that they don't always work properly. And for example, for some odd reason, when I've actually inserted this one uh, with a CF card, uh, a Kingston for 8 8GB CF card, it would uh, boot OK and then while the system, uh, well, NetBSD uh, 80, x86, uh, when the system would boot it would just uh, hang uh, the IDE bus and the entire system. Someone told me that might be actually an issue with uh, these CF cards not doing DMA properly. Despite that it's really handy to have uh, some of these uh, because as you could see in the terminal video uh, these Winterm uh, tiny computers uh, they were pretty fine with uh, CF card adapters. I guess what I want to say is uh, beware of uh, when you're using these CF card adapters uh, just be ready that some CF card and uh, chipset combinations might simply not work. I actually have a Slackware system uh, installed uh, the very same one because it was installed from the same CD that I was installing Slackware on this ThinkPad uh, that is Slackware 14.1 I've got it installed on a uh, AMD Geode-based uh, uh, PC-104 industrial PC, which I might show in another video, maybe. Slackware is really interesting because uh, it's probably one of the few modern distros that comes with a uh, kernel that was compiled for older CPUs. So, for example, that uh, industrial computer did not support a uh, physical address extension, did not support Pi. So, uh, booting up any modern kernel just arose out because uh, it's most modern kernels are compiled to use Pi because it's, well, it's a standard pretty much for the past 20 or so years. One of the nicer pieces of software you can actually install in Linux when you're working in uh, in the text mode uh, mostly is uh, GNU Screen or Tmux if you want to be a bit more modern. I personally prefer Screen and not just because I was uh, using Screen and I just know the key by heart. Uh, 
this uh, is right here the sort of the bottom taskbar is uh, just my dot screen RC uh, which I'll link uh, down below in the description I'm not planning to install any graphical environment on this laptop because that would probably kill it however uh, because this laptop has got two PC MCIA ports uh, I've installed a uh, Ethernet card in one of these it's a hundred megabyte megabit in Ethernet uh, adapter and as you can see we've got etern internet connectivity on this machine which is uh, pretty nice apart from that I've installed a Linux so we can browse the internet in text mode all in all uh, this still is a usable computer provided that you load uh, proper software on it so what we basically have got here is a SSD equipped Intel Pentium 3 based uh, laptop which is uh, about 20 years old now and uh, you can use it to do certain everyday tasks this is pretty much all of it that comes to this uh, video uh, I've made it sort of to close the topic of the 600x repair and bringing, bringing it back to life it will definitely uh, find place in my future videos uh, I'm planning to make one about uh, dial-up modems uh, that you might actually have seen a short clip of for now uh, make sure to check out the description because I've described the process of installing void Linux on this laptop in a blog post uh, that's linked in the description well I hope you liked this episode if you did then leave a like and subscribe uh, these uh, these are definitely very motivating to me and I enjoy reading the comments and other stuff that's all for now and see you in the next episode. Cheers!